friend of all. All right. Have you heard? He is the greatest friend of all. Have you heard? Yes, he is. What a friend we have in Jesus. Mom may be a good friend. Your sister may be a good friend. You may have a best friend you went to school with. Y'all still close. But the friend that Jesus is, he's always there when you need him. He may not come when you want him, but he is an on time God. Turn to John 20. If you have it, say amen. And if you need me to hold on, just say so. <laughs> John 20. Starting at John 20 at verse 24. And it reads, But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. I will not believe. All right. You all may be seated. The time this is Check your relationship. First off, giving all the praises to my Amen. Heavenly Father, who is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. and to that sweet and Holy Spirit that dwells within us, Amen. and to my brothers, Pastor Payne, Warren Booker, Warren Brown, Warren McNeil, to the deacons that stand at the foot of the cross, to the mothers, ministers, wives, deaconess, to this beautiful choir that just touched my heart today, Amen. to all you all, my brothers and sisters. Things that's been going on in my life and so much in everybody else's life that God tells us to, you need to check your relationship. The word says, no man knows the day or the hour that I may return. Then the choir, of course, the choir says you need to get your house in order. I'm going to tell you a story about Thomas, but I'm going to go to the beginning of this chapter. See, in the beginning of this chapter, Mary Magdalene went to the place where Jesus was buried. And she seen that the rock was moved. So she went and told Simon and Peter they took Jesus away. Right. So Peter and they ran to the place to see exactly what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. right. And when they got to the sepulcher, they seen that the rock was moved. When they looked inside, they seen that the clothes was in one spot, but the napkin that was wrapped around his head was in another. Yeah. So when the disciples, disciples left, they ran into their own homes, and but Mary stayed there. And when Mary looked back into the sepulcher, she seen there was two angels sitting in white. Right. One was sitting at the foot, and one was sitting at the head where the body of Jesus was laid. Then they asked her, why are you weeping? She said, they took my Lord away, but I don't know where they laid him. So, so Mary turned around, she seen Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. All right, all right. Yes, sir. Jesus said, Mary. Yes, sir. Yeah. She called him Rabbi, which means master. Amen. Jesus told her, touch me not, for I have not yet sinned to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I am sent to my father and to your father and to my God, 
your God. So Mary went to the disciples and told them that she seen Jesus. And when she told them, Thomas wasn't there. The disciples told Thomas that they had seen them at one time. And he said, I didn't. See, Thomas had that Missouri attitude. You know how Missouri right. is to show me state. Yeah. You don't want to believe nothing yeah. until you see it. Right. Yes, I live in Missouri, so you got to prove me wrong. Yeah. But he said, except I shall see his hands into the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Mm -hmm. But eight days later, the disciples and Thomas were all gathered together again. And Jesus came into the midst of them and said, Peace be, be unto you. All right. See, and Jesus told Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Yes. See, I can see Thomas, he had that face like, I messed up. This, this, this is God right here. And he said, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, but yet have believed. Now you got to take this up out of that equation. We're having that mind state of, I'm the show me state. You got to show me to prove me wrong. See, earlier in this in this book, in this chapter 16, Jesus speaks about the comfort. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. See, the Spirit is not going to be in a place where he is not one. But the Word tells us that when there are two or three gathered in my name, that I shall be in the midst of them. Glory be to God that we have that Holy Spirit. For he said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Yes. It is to your advantage that I must go away. All right, sir. For if I do not go away, then the comforter, which is the advocate is what they said, which is the comforter, will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And this is the best part. As I was reading this chapter, you can tell the spirit was so heavy amongst myself. He says, when he comes, he will prove the world wrong concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me and concerning righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will not see me no longer. And concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. Again, he goes back and tell you, you need to check your relationship. I'm going to prepare a place for you, but you don't know when I'm coming back. The choir told us to get your house in order. Yes, sir. And now you have so many Thomases at the church instead of being in church. I'm say that again because I don't think y'all can what I said. You have so many Thomases at church. But not, not in church. In church. Oh, Preach on, man. Come on, man. You think you wonder why God is not working in your favor? Sorry, Pastor Payne. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm not talking about nobody. But you have church folks saying that, giving all the praise to my Heavenly Father, to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But as soon as you walk outside those doors, you would cut somebody out over the phone. And then come Friday, you know it's payday. Now you want to go to the store, buy your outfit, because you're going to the club. All right now. You got your priorities all messed up. All right. God said, I come first. There is no other God before me. Yes, sir. See, when God built this place from Monday through Saturday, he did all his work. 
But Sunday he rests. Where do you say that God put somebody else before his people? See, God said himself that I don't want no lukewarm Christians to follow me. Either you're going to be hot for me or you're not. I'd rather really be on that hot side because I refuse to be lukewarm and I refuse to be cold for him because I've seen the work that he has done in my life. Again, he's telling you to check your relationship. I'm not going to keep y'all here long. I'm not going to do that to you. See, you have so many people that's in the church that so bounded by the devil's grasp, they tend to spread rumors around the church and forget to look at themselves. And now they realize that they are the problem, but not the person that they're talking about. So you're blinded by sin if you don't know what's wrong that you're doing. And as soon as God shows you that wrong, now you need to take a step back for yourself and check your relationship. And when God shows you what you're doing and you realize your relationship with Christ is on a little shaky hand, you need to kneel down and pray to God and ask God to forgive you for your sins. So many people, again, have that Thomas kind of attitude in the beginning. So you got to humble yourself. If you don't, God will put you in the lowest pits to make you realize, I am God. See, again, Thomas had the I don't believe it attitude. So Jesus made it plain and showed him what he wanted to see. So many people want God to move right now. But the word says in the fullness of time, which means God's perfect time. He's an on time God. You may pray for something last week. And you expect for him to answer you now. But so many people pray to God and want to get up and go on by their business. Stay there and listen to what he's saying. And that particular situation that you're praying about may be a job situation. So you want to go apply for a job. You got denied that job because he may have something better for you, but your mind is not thinking what God told you to think about. Right. So you're upset because you didn't get that job. It was not in God's will for you to have that job. See, as God's children, we tend to neglect him sometimes. So when you start feeling lonely, it's usually God's way of crying out for you to spend that quality time with him. You can go on to church Sunday. What do you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? You may go to Bible study. Thursday, Friday, all these other things is having your attention. But soon the Sundays hit, oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Right. But what are you doing throughout that week? Right. Are you giving him that time that he asked for? Right. You can spend 10 hours on a video game. You can spend so many hours playing basketball, so many hours playing football, so many hours on the phone. But how much time is it for you to just take an hour out of your all day right, and right. praise God? Yeah. Amen. 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 See, God wants that Amen. personal relationship with all of his children, but sometimes we get distracted with the fruitless things, and we tend to call on him when we're in trouble and when we need something. So ask yourself, what kind of person do you want in your life? Right. Often when people sense that loneliness right. and sanity reflect over past relationships, right. they start becoming <clears throat> envious of other people's relationships, oh questioning their physical oh appearance, oh wondering if God cares about their oh condition. Yeah. Eventually become impatient and to find alternate to feel void of loneliness. Say that, sir. Say that, sir. See, now if you have that relationship with Christ, yeah. you don't have to worry about feeling lonely because he is that friend for you. You don't worry about being impatient or questioning your appearance because God said everything I've made is perfect. And wondering if God really cares about your condition. For his word says to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. 
and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I remember when I was Amen. working with this kid, and he said he didn't believe in God. I was curious. I wanted to hear more. The word said, don't argue with nobody about God's word. I'm not worried. I just want to hear why he don't believe. And he said, everything I've done in my life because of I did it. And I said, say that again. He said, everything I've done in my life, I did it. When I put myself in trouble, I put myself in trouble. When I got out of trouble, I got myself out of trouble. And all I could do was say, man, I'm sorry to hear that, that you don't believe. And I know what the word says. So, so you have to that relationship and not worry about anything. See, that's the kind of relationship that I want to have. It's a God that's going to lead and guide my every footsteps. Rather than being drugged straight to hell by the devil and being so blinded by the foolishness of the things that's going on in the world. You being so brainwashed that you forget what God has set for you to do. See, going back, Jesus has told his disciples to go to the world, tell all the nations, spread it. He didn't say go convince anybody. He didn't say go brainwash anybody. He said just go tell somebody. By you telling somebody, you're planting the seed. You're planting the seed because Christ said go tell somebody. So we as God's children are supposed to be followers of Christ. And it saddens me that sometimes we can't even sit in church for an hour to hear the word of God. Amen. Then you wonder why the church is so dead. Because your mind is not focused on what Christ has set for us to do. His word says to keep your mind focused on things above and not the things here on earth. To break it down, keep your mind focused on me and not the foolishness that you see out in this world. Because the foolishness ways of the world will blind you and keep you from doing what I have sent for you to do. See, as, as, as children of Christ, we have to go into the world and tell the world what thus said the Lord. And so what if other people get mad at you because of what you're saying about God? They may not be believers, but Christ said, go tell somebody. That's it, that's it. For he said, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me first. If you are in the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of it. I'd rather for God to call me home than leave me standing there. And he said, therefore, the world hated you. Now, I remember once upon a time in my life that I was like Thomas at first. I had that kind of attitude that I don't believe nothing until I see it. Until I look and realize that every time I set my mind to do something, it always get pushed back. That's because I wasn't putting God first. I wanted to do things that I wanted to do and disobey what he was saying. He told me to go to church. I went to the club. I may not look like a club person, but believe me, I was in the club. But that just shows you how God can change your life. And God will put you in the lowest pits. So when Thomas had asked God, when Thomas said that he wanted to see for itself. Thomas was made a believer out of it. God said, Jesus said, look, here it is. You wanted to see. Now you want to say, my Lord, my God, you should have been believing in the first place. But your attitude, you got to take yourself out of the equation. For the word says, any man shall come after me, he must deny himself first, and take up his cross, and follow me. So at one time, I remember when, when I had that Thomas attitude. Jesus put me in the lowest pits. He made me humble myself and realize that he is God Almighty. And he made me realize that my relationship was headed in the wrong direction. I was diving head first to hell. And now I surrendered my life 
to Christ. This is now he has showed me so many things, and I haven't even prayed about it. But he has showed up and showed out. He said, Why call me Lord of Lord if you can't do what I asked for you to do? But you want me to bless you with a new job, bless you with a new car, bless you with these clothes, bless you with your own house. But what are you doing to serve me? So I had to realize that my relationship was out of whack. So now that Thomas is now that believer. So you have to understand that that Thomas attitude will get you in trouble. God is saying, be ready. Don't wait until the last minute to realize I am God. Yes, sir. I remember hearing parents say, I ain't going to say whose parents. As quick as I brought you in the world, I can take out of it just as quick. And, and, and it's funny because you have people that will be scared to do things in front of their mother, scared to say certain things to their father. When they go to school, they want to seem like they're the good child, but realizing they're not the best child ever. But realizing that God sits high and looks low, he can see everything that you're doing. I remember hearing that saying, whatever is done in the dark, it shall come to light. So while you're doing your wrong and you don't feel bad about what you're doing, you need to take a step back and check your relationship. So if you had that relationship with Christ, you will realize what wrong that you're doing. And when you know that you have done wrong and you feel bad about it, that's because you're still wrapped up in God's love. You're still wrapped up in God's realm. So therefore, you know what you've done wrong. Then you go back. The song says, come to the altar. Kneel down and pray. Yeah, 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 yeah. Prayer without works is dead. How can you pray for something but don't believe in what you're praying about? So you must believe in what you're praying about. The Bible says every man must pray. Yes, Lord. That means women too. My God. That means kids too. It touched my heart because my niece and nephew called me the other day. Uncle Jay, can you pray with us? Jesus. <laughs> you show sure right, baby. We can pray. <laughs> right there, God is telling you, check your relationship. Amen. I remember again one time where I was like Thomas. All right. And Jesus has showed me. But it hurt my heart to see this man that I gave my life to. I surrendered my life to and told him to take over my life. Right. You're now the driver. I'm just following what you have for me to do. And I remember seeing Jesus carrying this old rugged cross. As he was carrying that cross, he was getting with my heart was, it was hurting bad. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, and as he said he's trying to go up Galgotha's hill, he was falling. As he said again, hit, he's falling. And when he got to Calvary, I seen him lay him on his old rugged cross. He was on his old rugged cross, he had his arms stretched out wide. And now the tears is just coming down my eyes because they are abusing this man that, who I love, who I gave my life to. When I seen him hammer these nails into his hands, my heart was just getting heavy. When I seen him nail this other nails into his other hand, I couldn't take no more. And then looking at him, you can tell he had this weeping face. Oh they went to him with spikes into his feet. I jumped because that looked like that was painful. Oh I can't even take my hand touching on the stove, oh let alone nails into his feet. Oh and when they raised him up on that cross, I checked my relationship and realized that the word says if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. Right there, I knew that my relationship was headed in the right direction. And as he hung there, the worst thing they did, they put this crown of thorns on his head. Now blood was streaming. But he said, Father, and all the wrong that they had done to him, he said, Father, please.
please forgive them for they not know what they do. Now, when I was in the world, we would have been fighting. You weren't going to hit me. You weren't going to touch me. Say nothing wrong to me. We would have been fighting. But this man said, Father, please forgive them for they not know what they do. All I could do was smile. And he said, it is finished. He gave up the ghost. He died on that rugged cross. As they got him down, they put him in that ball tomb. And he laid there all day Friday. And all day Saturday. And all night Saturday. But that relationship with Christ and God, it was that relationship that no one can break. So early on Sunday morning, I say early on Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power in his hands. All power to save and all power to deliver. If you feel like your relationship is not right with Christ, he will show you the kind of relationship that he wants you to have. He now sits on the right hand of his father. He's a God that looks high and looks low. He's waiting for you to build that relationship. For he's knocking at the door saying, I'm here. I'm not forcing myself onto you. I'm knocking, I'm just waiting. Yes, Lord. And the minute he comes in and sup with you, watch him turn your life around. You're going to have that Thomas attitude at first. But the word says, try the spirit by the spirit. Therefore, when I have tried him, he has turned my life around. So now my relationship is fine. He wants to come and sub with you. He said, find out my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Thank you, Lord. The doors of the church. Thank you, Lord. Now open. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God that Jesus Christ died on that cross. He didn't just die on the cross because that was his father's plan. He died on the cross because he came to, to the world. He died for our sins. Forgive me, may have that tree of life of salvation. Uh -huh. He said, just come unto me. Yeah. All you weak and worried, just come unto me. Yeah. And I'll give you rest. Yeah. He said, come unto me. Uh -huh. I will yeah. give you rest. Yeah. So instead of you waking up on mornings, Worrying how you're going to do this and how you're going to do that. He will. He will show you. But first, you have to come unto him first. And you're going to realize that his burden is easy. He will bring that smile to your face. And you will realize that God is calling for you to come home. Oh, oh, in the life of Christ and just watch him work in the life oh, he's asking me. he's waiting yeah. he's not forcing himself onto you oh, God has already laid out the foundation we just have to accept and oh, accept his life and just follow him Oh, and watch how it works. And all the people. Anyone is there who haven't if you had that reality check. So who wants to have that personal relationship with Christ. Now is the time. Yeah. Thank you. And you don't want to wait until late. When that time comes, it's called you his children home. You don't want to wait too late. By then, it's just my soul is crying, saying, Lord, help me. Shake me and mold me. Huh? Yeah. The young man and the woman that you desire to be. Even have he will do so. All you gotta do is try. All you gotta do is just try. All my burden. And it is a beautiful. Jesus Christ, 
Oh! 